Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with The Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Wednesday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Now, we do have, uh, we've got an exciting promotion coming. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to last for a couple of months, okay? And we'll give you a little teaser to it today. So here's what we've got. We have got some Thunder tickets to give away to next Friday night, November the 8th, okay? November the 8th, next Friday night, Thunder versus Rockets. A couple of the good young teams in the NBA, Thunder versus Rockets. So we have four tickets to Thunder Rockets to give away. I have a um, trivia question. And the first one that can text in to 225-9698 with the correct answer will win Thunder Rockets tickets. I've got a couple of trivia questions, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask Jared, <clears throat> should we do – I've got a very interesting NFL trivia question, and I've got a World Series trivia question. Now, here's the thing. Both are very, very relevant to the time. Okay. Okay. There, it's both very, very relevant. I think one will be harder to find than the other. I think the NFL one will be harder to Google up than the World Series one. Yeah. That. Yeah. Make so it harder. Make it harder yeah. to Google. Okay. So we'll ask the NFL trivia question for four Thunder tickets to Rockets Thunder coming up next Friday, November eighth. Once I do all the kind of show starters. I'll ask the question. Whoever can text it in, 225-9698, will be the first recipient. We'll need a phone number, need an email address, because we have those tickets that we can just ship to you. Electronically. Electronically. Yeah. So be listening for that question. Coming up on the show today, we've got Coach Maynard, Big Elks, huge game, obviously, on Friday night, going to Bridge Creek, playoff spot on the line in Class 4A's District 1. We'll get his thoughts on last week's game against Weatherford. Look ahead to the Bridge Creek Bobcats. <clears throat> got some college football in the middle of the show here's a question you know each year there's like it, it, like a theme starts developing you know like th- think back to 2007 it was that was the year that everybody had two losses except for ohio state you know and lsu finally ends up playing and, but there were so many teams that had chances to be a one loss team opposing ohio state in the in the Sugar Bowl, and nobody could get it done. They just everybody kept on losing. That got to number one. Yeah, you know, and there's just there's themes that develop. What do you, th- as of right now, what do you think the theme is for this season? And then, what's your personal favorite storyline of the season so far? Uh, and then we'll talk World Series. Yankees stay alive. How would they do it? I, I think there was a couple of things they did. Um, I was shocked by the all-time numbers when teams fall behind 3-0 in the World Series. Did you see those? Uh, were they kind of talking about last night? A little bit. Yeah. It's crazy how dominant <laughs> the 3-0 lead has been in the World Series. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that. Is Freddie Freeman the MVP no matter what? Um, give me a percent chance that the, uh, that the uh, Yankees actually come back. And do the impossible, which is win four in a row. And then the pitching matchup tonight, I think, starts to de- determine that the question before is how much you think. Um, now, in college football, not the NFL, Washington commanders don't count for college football. Oh, come on. Let him have his time. I mean, it, it only happens about once every 20 years. I know, but it looks like it might be happening for a while now. 225 9698 is the phone Unless of the he text gets line. tired like these other young quarterbacks. And- yeah, 225 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. Talk about any of those things, whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225 9698. Going to be outside the listening area. A couple ways to stay in touch with the show. Log on to kadsam.com or download the app. The app's got it all. Radio, Penny News. Brand new edition of the Penny News is on the website right now. Check it out, thepennynews.com. 
Got Big Elk and Paragon TV coming up on Friday night. The Elks and Bridge Creek when Merritt uh, goes to Crescent. And, of course, Skinny on Sports podcast available anywhere where podcasts drop. How are you today, Jared? I'm good. How are you doing? Okay, here we go. I, I, I found, I'm, a, I'm a little worried, I, to be honest. Why are you worried? I had a question posed to me last night that I didn't know how to answer. Okay, can you fire it out there? I Can I be a Dodgers fan and a Rangers fan? No. Come on, bro. Your wife wants to be a Dodgers fan and a Rangers fan? She says, well, I am from California. It's like, well, you should have been a Dodgers fan the entire time. And you're from Orange County. You know, this that would, would make you more of an Angels fan. This would have been a little less suspect if she to say it. If she would have said maybe, um, ask this question while you were at an Oklahoma City Dodgers minor league game in the middle of the summer two years ago when it wasn't the World Series, or right. if she had asked this ten years ago before the Dodgers were good. Well, don't kid yourself. I'm loving this uh, sudden infatuation with it's a little with baseball. Oh yeah! Oh look at this. What is this? Peanut patties. Nice from from Jimmy Clark's made, peanuts. We'll have to do with, a ta- we'll have to do a taste test on the air. Made here a with bit. Jimmy's nuts. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate the the nuts <laughs> coming in patty form. Only Jimmy, the nuttiest guy here, makes or grows his own peanuts. So, uh, you know. I mean, I sat there. And thought, I think well, it's a little sus. One's uh, one's in the National League. One's American League. And we could have a house divided. What would you possibly if the do? What back. would she possibly do if they played in the World Series yeah, against each other? Exactly. Just, oh, I win. Exactly. That's not, yeah. You can't do that. I don't know because last year, of course, she was she's a Rangers fan because of me. Sure. And really jumped on board with that on that magical run. And real, I mean, she just she pit, she picks a player out. Loved Garcia, right? Every time Garcia up the bat, she stopped to watch because that dude had a run, right? Just like Freddie Freeman is right now. Mm-hmm. Every time Freddie Freeman's coming up the bat, it's oh, stop talking, stop. We gotta watch Freddie bat. So next year, is she, if Mike Trout can stay healthy and the Angels find their way into the World Series, is she gonna go? Oh, oh can I be an Angels fan too? Uh, Orange s- County, I uh, certainly. <laughs> well, I hope not. Actually, I hope it does, so I can throw all this back in her face. Go now. Wait a minute. You were an LA fan last year. Plus, that would be more of the division rivalry that you could have a little trash talk throughout the summer. Uh, yeah, I can always tolerate her being a Dodgers fan. I would say she just needs to be a Dodgers a, fan, not an Angels fan. If I was her, I'd just be heaven the Dodger. forbid an Astros fan. I'd just be the Dodgers fan and not worry about the just just <laughs> kind of claim. You know what? I was just in it for you last year with the Rangers. I was just so rooting for you supporting my husband but i'm really like team from back where i'm from <laughs> that's how i would handle that yeah. if i was her i uh, it, it's such a it's so weird because i'm loving that she is wanting to watch the games and sit sit down and i was so mad i got up uh james was playing at a friend's house she says hey go get james it's time for dinner and they're a couple blocks away so i jumped in the truck and this was right at seven Missed the home run. I got went over there. Of course, she <clears throat> chatted up with the parents. And, How you doing? And uh, they had the game on. Well, watch Otani hit. I was like, "Hey, come on, let's get home." And then I mentioned to Katie or to James, "If I miss Freddie Freeman hitting mm-hmm. a first team home run, I- I'm going to be kicking myself." Walk through the doors, and guess what? Do I hear? Allie just screaming, "You missed it! You missed it!" Yeah. We were setting, I actually, my wife, so we went to Clinton last night, last middle school football game, seventh graders, the Elk, the Big Elk, seventh graders finished undefeated. Yeah, I heard they played Clinton again. I thought they already yeah, played They already Clinton had, they already had. Played and, them again? Uh, seventh Is graders Alba, played. Alba chickened out or something? I don't know what happened. Seventh graders <laughs> played again, uh, as one of, uh, one of my former coaches said after the eighth grade game, we were standing around, and he said, well, I guess they played, but it wasn't here. Because of the no-show from the 8th grade Elks, Clinton just put it on them. After uh, losing to us here, the Clinton 8th grade just smoked us. Hmm. 38 nothing. It was like the Big Elks. Even we got back in the car and I was like, I knew we were going to lose that game before we ever started because nobody really wanted – it was like one of those deals, you know. My wife actually said on the way home, I can't believe I missed the baseball game for that. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> and I was kind of kind of with him. 
Okay, here we go. I'd say she has to be a Dodgers fan if I were her. If I was Allie, I'd say, you know what? I'm a Dodgers fan. I was just rooting for Rangers because you like them. That's how I'd handle that if I was her. No. That's how I'd go with it. I think you're just trying to create problems. No, you can't be both. She can't be a fan of both teams. No, well, I'm not. No, I'm not buying her no Dodge Dodg- gear, nothing. The real test is I've already been looking at the schedule. When do the Dodgers come to Arlington? And if we go, so okay, what shirt are you going to put on? Well, she what are you going to do? A, well, if she doesn't put on a Dodgers fan, then she can't have Dodgers fandom, <laughs> a Dodgers shirt. Okay, here we go. Let's go with the trivia question. Yeah. 225-9698, trivia question for four Thunder tickets to next Friday, Feb- or February, November the 8th, against the Houston Rockets in Paycom Center. Here is the trivia question. Whoever can text in first, 225-9698, whoever texts in first with the correct answer will win the tickets. The question is, Who is the only quarterback in NFL history to throw eight touchdown passes versus the single versus a single opponent in a calendar month? Who is the only quarterback in NFL history to throw eight touchdown passes against a single opponent in a calendar month? Month. 225-9698 is the text line number. First one to get the correct answer will win those Thunder tickets to the Rockets game next Friday night. We've got uh, Bart Starr, Warren Moon. Neither are correct. I told you it was timely. I did say it was timely. Don't give too many clues. That's all I'm saying. Still not right. We got Tom Brady. Yes, okay. I was like everybody's first guess going to be Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly figured somebody would say Peyton Manning. Like Tom Brady versus uh, the Jets or the mm-hmm. Dolphins or something, but that's not it. No. All right, let's talk about the MLB game while people are firing in the guesses. Yanks stay alive. How'd they do it? What was different about last night, Jared? Well, clearly the hitting I thought was they finally got in a rhythm. Uh, started with the, we didn't start with this, but I mean it was is what kind of lit the fuse was the grand slam, and um, everything else just kind of snowballed from there. I, that 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 did it, and it was kind of impressive too when you get into a bullpen game like the Dodgers were thrown at them just trying to close that thing out with different looks, and, and they're still going out there and, and, um, and smashing the way they did. So that was, I, for me, and I said it yesterday, that's what it's going to take to get them back in it because it's been kind of lackluster. This hitting has been in this series for the Yankees. For them to, to compete with this high-octane Dodgers offense, you have to have offense to combat offense, and um, they brought it last night. Now the question is, was it – was it just like a little firecracker and there's nothing left for tonight? We'll see. Yeah. That's, who would have heard and, and what's crazy is uh, uh, what Judge do? He got, finally got a hit. He, he, he got looked, a hit. I will say this. He looked way more comfortable up there than he has. He, he got a lead. They he, even yeah. say that they, they even said, uh, I think Burkhardt or Smoltz, one of the two, said he doesn't look as jumpy. And I agree 100%. It wasn't like, you know, the the first three games, man, he looked completely lost and he, like he was just lunging at it, trying so hard. Right. You know, he he actually, even though he, you know, he got the the finally got the RBI single in that eighth five run eighth inning, but even the swings he was taking were so much more. It felt like he was so much more on balance, right? I mean, it it looked like Aaron Judge instead of whatever that other guy was, so, you know, fa- just flailing it outside. Uh, off-speed pitches that he really had no chance to do anything with. And, and he even took a low outside fastball for a strike with like a 2-1 count. And and to me, that was a good sign because he's like, okay, I can't do anything with that one. Even if I, you know, if it's a strike, it's a strike. I've still got one more. And then that's the at-bat where he got that single. Uh, so I thought he looked better, but you're right. Here, here, they did what the Dodgers had done the first three games. Yankees hitters drew, drew six walks. And only struck out four times. 
In the first three games, they were four for 20 with runners in scoring position. Last night, in just one game, four for 15. And oh, by the way, a couple of those outs generated runs. Verdugo uh, grounded out for for an RBI, and I can't remember who else did. So essentially, they were six for 15 at the plate as far as producing run producing hits with runners in scoring position after going four for their first 20 in the first three games. You're right. The hitting was so much better. Uh, let's see. We're still waiting on answer. Who would have thought we'd have two Jameis Winstons fired in? <laughs> well, they're saying timely. They're thinking of somebody that, yeah, sure. that did something um, we got a Bradford, just recently. It's Sam Bradford, Peyton Manning, Favre, Warren Moon, Bart Starr. None of those are the correct answer. The uh, The question on the table for the Thunder tickets next Friday is, who is the only quarterback in NFL history to throw eight touchdowns against a single opponent in a in a calendar month? The only quarterback in NFL history with eight touchdown passes against a single opponent in a month in a calendar month. Uh, but anyway, back to the baseball. Uh, not Mahomes. Um, Get out of here, Dakota. <laughs> of course, it, it's always going to be Mahomes. The, the walks, the walks, and the in the strikeouts through the yeah. first three games. Dodgers hitters had walked nine times and only struck out 17. Yankees hitters for the first three had walked 12, struck out 31. And then last night, that completely flipped. The Dodgers threw three, drew three walks, struck out eight times. Yankees hitters walked six and only struck out four. So uh, no doubt that they saw it better from the plate. Maybe that's because of the bullpen game. Maybe not. But you look at tonight, and it was the first time really they had a lead. I mean, a real lead after the Volpe Grand Slam. Um, Mm -hmm. You look at tonight with the pitching matchup, Garrett Cole against uh, Flaherty. It was the same matchup as as, um, week one, or week one, game one. And so uh, I think this is great. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Breaking news. We We have a winner. We have a winner. Somebody... Got on Google. What is it? Who is it? And who the is answer, it against? The answer is Kirk Cousins. Ah. Kirk Cousins is your answer. He has thrown eight touchdown passes this single month against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Thursday night game oh, yeah. a few weeks back yeah. where he threw for 500 yards, and then this week – they beat the Bucks 31-26. Kirk Cousins. Yeah, if you're paying attention, that should have been obvious because isn't that the first rematch of divisional opponents this season? Could be. I think that's that's true. Could be, yeah. Because I think I heard that during uh, my watching of Red Zone. See, you said um, you you said when you said Brady, you used divisional opponents as the example. Like, oh, could it be Brady against uh, the Jets yeah. or the Dolphins? I was wondering yeah. if anybody picked up didn't, on that. Yeah, because I didn't mean to do that. But because what, I didn't know the answer for the record. I didn't know the answer. The record in a in a single game is like, what, six or seven maybe? It's not even to eight. So it had to have been a divisional opponent that you would play twice. Mm-hmm. Or I guess, I guess it could have been a playoff situation where you might finish the season against somebody and then play them again. And play them again, yeah. But... Yeah. How do you think you say that name? Amber Breesey? Congratulations. Uh, Whoever you are. Congratulations. We will send in an 806 number. Texas Panhandle. We will sit. We will get those tickets. We can send them. We have your phone number. We have your email address. That's what we need to be able to ship those to you electronically. Thank you to our future sponsor of this contest, whoever that may be. Yes. Hopefully, yeah. (laughs) We don't know. Here's the deal. We have got... We've got We've, a great deal on this. We, we, yeah, we have awesome stuff coming up. Um, at the end of December, we've got – so we got four tickets at the end of December, twice in January, twice in February, three times in March, and then in April. So it's a total of two, four, six, ten games. Some of the games coming up, this one's Rockets. You're talking about Grizzlies, Knicks, Kings, Nuggets, Pacers – Lakers, so it's not like you're just getting a bunch of Pistons and whatever. Oh, yeah, you're getting some some marquee games. 
I mean, right now they appear to be. Who knows? But, but no, yeah, you want to go see. Listen, Lakers, it doesn't matter who, how they are or who they look. It's the Lakers. Yeah, there's some good ones in there. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> That's me. I love it. It's my wife's email. I don't have an email. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Um, <laughs> is Freddie Freeman the MVP no matter what? Yeah, I think so. I'd, unless unless someone like Judge or uh, who's the young man who hit the homer? Volpe. It's a cool story, too. He's from the area. Grew up a Yankees fan, hit a grand slam. I mean, isn't it sort of like mini Jeter right now? A little bit. Yeah, you can see the, the beginnings of Jeter. Right. Like he was in 96 against the Braves. If he goes on a run and they come back and and Freeman goes I, cold. I, I, think it, I think it completely depends on A – what else Freddie does the rest of the series, and B, how many games it goes. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. No matter what Freddie Freeman does, it's gonna be hard for him to win the MVP on the losing team if New York comes back and wins from down three zero for the first time ever. Yeah. Barring that, he probably if he continues. I mean, obviously. So do you, do you know if there's ever been an MVP on a losing team? That was going to be the other question, by the way. You know, I was out, I actually thinking about that last night. And I can't think of one. I didn't look it up. One time. One time? One time. It happened in 1960. And if you go back and look at the 1960 World Series, one, it's got one of the most memorable World Series plays of all time. Was that the um, Willie Mays? No. It was when Bill Mazeroski hit the home run in Game 7 to end it against the Yankees. The The Pirates against the Yankees. The Pirates win in seven games. And the Yankees outscored them in the seven games by like forty. <laughs> like I mean, the Yankees just dominated three games of the series, and the Pirates won four games. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. one of those weird circumstances. But Yankees second baseman Bobby Richardson was the MVP on the losing team. He set two all-time records that still stand today for a single World Series. He hit three sixty-seven. He only hit one home run, but he drove in twelve runs. That's still the most ever in a World Series. And he had 11 hits in seven games. That's still the most in a, in a World Series. Now, here's here's where Freeman's at. He's obviously the first to hit a home run in six straight World Series games. Two with the, with the Braves back in uh, 21, then the first four. He's the first one to ever hit a home run in the first four games of a World Series. Because George Springer's five was the same way. It was two from before and then three in the current one. He's the first player ever with 10 RBI in the first four games of a World Series. He's one shy of the most home runs in a single World Series ever, which is five, shared by three guys. Any ideas? No. Who? Reggie. Here's what's crazy. Either the Dodgers or the Yankees gave up these five home runs each time it's happened. It's happened three times. Reggie in 1977 against the Dodgers for the Yankees <laughs> as a Yankee. That, that series went six. Chase Utley had six, had uh, five in, in six games in 2009 for the Phillies and the loss to the Yankees. And then George Springer of Houston in seven games hit five against the Dodgers. And now you've got Freddie trying to do it as a Dodger again against the Yankees. So it's got kind of weird there. And then, of course, most RBI, he's already got 10. The record is 12, as I mentioned by Bobby Richardson. You know who's second with 11? Who's that? Mickey Mantle. Same series for the Yankees. Wow. Those guys drove in 23 runs for the Yankees in those seven games. Then Freddie's at 10. Mike Napoli, back in 2011 for the Rangers, drove in 10 in the loss uh, to, to St. Louis. Sandy Alomar drove in 10 for Cleveland in 1997 when they beat the Marlins. Yogi Berra, and that was seven game series, and then Yogi Berra in nineteen fifty six for the Yankees in a seven game series. So, I mean, Freddie is so far ahead of anybody's pace when it comes to some of this stuff, where it's hard to imagine. But the, his 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 major problem is though, it would be the Yankees coming back from three zero, and it's never happened in the World Series, and it's not even been close. Yeah, so they were talking about. I, I heard some of that talk last night. That the, I think they're talking about the percentage chance of last, it being done. Last time, last night, 
So last night was the 25th game four with the 3 0 lead. That was only the fourth time the team that a team made it to five games. Of the previous 24, it was 21 and 3. 21 were sweeps. Isn't that nuts? That's crazy. That it's that lopsided? No one's ever won game five. They can make history. The, the Yankees can make history tonight just by getting it to game six. Only three teams had ever won game four, and it hadn't happened since 1970. I think there had been 10 chances. And this was the first time it happened since 1970. Did you just say, well, I wonder what, if there's, you know, you have that uh, on ES, on the ESPN app where it says percentage chance of winning and losing. Mm-hmm. I wonder what that was when the Dodgers went up two to nothing. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Percentage yeah. Of, of, you know what I mean? Oh, sure. In, yeah, like live odds to win the it's game. like, take note of that if somehow they win tonight see and if they've force got game it. six and just how how close they were to on the brink man where would you find that uh i can look that being a game cast maybe yeah I, I, yeah here it is got it what is it okay they, so it's after the first it inning. started out the first top of the first when freddie freeman hit the home run it was 59.4%. So not crazy. Not horrible cuz it happened in the first. It so got all... it got to yeah, 68. Sure it changed. It, the highest it got to was 68.6%, which was in the top of the second inning when Lux doubled. Led off with the double if I remember right. Yeah. Just kind of checking the score. I think he led off he, he had a, a, a leadoff double in the second with already a 2 nothing lead. So it got to 68.6%. And the first time it went with the Yankees uh, was when they started getting guys on base before the Grand Slam. Anyway, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, great pitching matchup tonight again. Garrett Cole. It was funny. They they relived the on the broadcast. They, they relived this exactly what I talked about yesterday with Kevin Millar back in that 04 Red Sox run to to topple the Yankees, and now he went around saying, "Don't let us win Game Four. Don't let us win mm, Game yeah. Four. And I guess a bunch of the bunch of the Yankees guys were, "Don't let us win Game Four. Then we got Cole in Game Five. Then we got Rodon in Game Six. Don't let us win Game Four. Don't let us get hot." We'll see if that carries well, through. We'll see. What chance do you give them? What percentage chance do you give the Yankees to do it? To come back or just to win tonight? Just to come back? Come back and win it all. Oh, man, less than 25%. Yeah, I'd, say less, being I'd say less than 10. I about said 10, but I'm. Uh, it, we still got a game tonight in the Bronx. So I'm going to say a 5% chance right now. Yeah, it's not a very good. 19 out of 20, which... Okay, that's not too far off because so far they're 0 for 20. Maybe what is uh what's 5 into what's 1 into 25? Whatever. 1 in the 1 of 1 divided by 20. What's the percentage? 1 out of 25. 4. You're 4%. Asking, you're asking me math. Well, it's 4%. That I can't do with Cuz if you do if you do 25 times 4 it's 100, 1 times 4 is 4. So a 4% chance. How about that? That's literally what it is, as far as the numbers. We got a zero, zero point, point zero. zero. The blue Tarski from our mascot. All right, we got to get uh, out of here. What we, do you got? We, we cannot talk about this game from last night without the ridiculousness. Those idiot fans. You would hope, and I'm not talking about the the gray shirt dude who was ripping at the glove. His buddy next to him grabbing on, grabbing his, his wrist, his wrist. Shout out to uh, to our man Ryder Cowan. He's up How's the, he doing? He's up in the top 100 of the World Amateur go- Golf Rankings for the first time. He started out 1,187th one and a half years ago, headed to Hawaii today with the Sooners to finish up the fall schedule. How Man, cool is that? that doesn't suck. 94th. It's great stuff. Absolutely fantastic That's stuff. awesome. Uh, speaking of fantastic, <clears throat> coming up Friday, yearly event out at the Civic Center. It's the Western Oklahoma Christian Schools Hamburger Fry. There's two different sessions. You can go for lunch at 11 to 1.30. You can go for dinner from 5 to 7.30, or you can go for both. Well, why not both? 
Fundraiser benefits all the campuses in Clinton, Weatherford, and Elk City of the Western Oklahoma Christian Schools. You can dine in. You can carry it out. Tickets are $10 for adults, $5 for children. There's also some raffles, two raffles going on. You got a, a uh, Savage Axis XP 6.5 Creed Moore with the uh, 3.9 by 40 scope. Rifle with a scope. You also got beef grilling package. 60 pounds of steak, filet, uh, 60 pounds of steak, which is filets, ribeyes, strips, and sirloins, and 40 pounds of third pound burger patties. So 100 pounds of beef to grill is one of the raffle tickets. Raffle tickets, 10 bucks for one or six tickets for $100. Drawing is going to be at 730 on Friday night. Go check it out. It's great stuff. It's always a delicious burger. A lot of that, uh, all the meat is donated locally from farmers and ranchers around, or ranchers around. It's great stuff, man. It's a good time. Yeah. Western Oklahoma Christian Schools um, hamburger fry coming up on Friday. All right, yeah. What about the lunatics that were trying to take Mookie, Mookie Betts' glove, the ball, grabbing his other wrist? Again, should be banned for life. Don't touch a player, man. And then they try to justify saying, well, it's on this summer, it's over here. It's not free for all. You can't just grab a dude. and It's crazy. It's like you've never watched baseball before. You see so many catches coming over the rail, over the fence, bringing it back. You know what's crazy? That doesn't. That does not give you right to try to rip a ball out of a dude's glove. You know what's crazy? When I looked at it today, breaking news on this story, Hmm. that's not the first time that one of those fans has interfered in a playoff game at Yankee Stadium. Are you kidding me? No. It's grown up Jeffrey Mayer. Oh, that's funny. (laughs) (laughs) He was celebrated doing Uh, it the first time. uh, That's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, I I thought... I thought you were being serious. Like, how come he's back <laughs> no, in the no, stadium? No. I haven't heard any repercussions or what is happening. They got happening. kicked out. Well, I know they got kicked out, but I will certainly hope that. They should never get to go to a baseball game again. Ever. And what's nuts, and this is the funny thing, I guess if there's you take any solace in this fact, that they probably spent thousands yeah. of dollars on those tickets, on those seats. <clears throat> when that we, happened in the first or second inning? When we saw it on, that's the first thing Kara said was, what a bunch of, first off, what a bunch of idiots, but just think how much money they just blew. Yeah. By doing that. Yeah. And how much those tickets cost. All right, what a gonna... dork. He was wearing sunglasses at night, that one guy. Other dude had about four chins. What a bunch of dubs. What a... What? A, what? <laughs> Just getting stuff we can't say on air. No. <laughs> J-Max calling I'm, him we, heroes. We, He's clearly a <laughs> disgruntled Yankee fan. <laughs> oh, heavens. Oh, man. Heroes. They're heroes. The text line, he was 10 beers deep. Man, pace yourself, bro. It's a, a second inning. Yankees fans. Sorry, J-Mac. No, don't sorry, J-Mac. <laughs> this is his own, it was his own bad personal choice to root for a team with fans like that. He could have rooted for King Griffey Jr. He loves him so much. He just thought he would have rooted for whatever team he was on. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what happens if Freddie Freeman switches teams, if my wife will follow. Freddie Freeman's like the nicest guy in baseball. He's Everybody's hard just, not to root for. Well, he, yeah. He, One of his sons had that disease this season. He learned how to walk again. I mean, what a great guy. Shouldn't be rooting against Freddie Freeman, no matter who you no, root for. No. It was a great story. It is. can't believe my phone hasn't gone off. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, let's do the taste test. We can talk about the college football stuff tomorrow. So we're going to test Jimmy's nuts. All right. We're going to test Jimmy's peanuts. He, these are homemade? He he grew them. Well, I know this, but what is this? Uh, is this gr- a, it's a peanut patty. Peanut patty. Mm-hmm. It looks like something you put in your uh, your wax warmer thing. Oh, you can dive in right in. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows what a peanut patty is. It's kind of pink. Some kind of sugary candy around peanuts. 
You always kind of see them around the holidays, it feels like. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's because when peanut harvest is. I'm not normally a, I'll be honest, I'm not normally much of a peanut patty guy. <laughs> Delicious. Way to go, Jimmy. I'm trying to give the full experience how crispy the peanuts are. <laughs> yeah, the peanuts are great. <laughs> Jared, not a peanut patty fan. <laughs> I'll be real honest. It's the first time I've had that. A peanut patty. Well, when you looked at it, you're like, what is that? I'm like, how have you never seen a peanut I've, patty? I've seen them. I don't think. That's exactly what they look like. Mm. Oh, yeah. Peanuts are great. So you tested Jimmy's nuts, Jared. How do you feel? Well, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be nice. He the, can't He can't hear you anyway, so go ahead. Say cool. your true feelings. <laughs> the peanuts are... I like peanuts. Whatever this waxy substance holding them together. The uh, pink sugary thing. I, I'm not a fan of that. I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to be mean, because I'm sure his wife had a hand in this, too. <laughs> oh, dear. And I don't want to offend her, either. It's just... <laughs> oh, you made me snore. <laughs> uh, I didn't even think about that. I'm, I'm not going to... Oh, heavens. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> why, why did we do... <laughs> I'm going to have to go get some water, so. <laughs> see if Zach's yeah, out there. We'll see if Coach is out here. Peanuts are delicious. Maybe he can eat these nuts. I don't know. <laughs> well done, Jimmy Clark. Well done. Peanuts are delicious. Jared just doesn't like the pink, waxy substance around them. Coach Zach Maynard joining us. Big Elk football. Uh, Coach, man, another tough, tough loss. Uh, I thought you guys played hard. I thought you had a great plan offensively to, to kind of use what they were doing uh, against Cole. To your advantage, Tucker was open over the middle a bunch of different times. Just one of those deals, uh, you know, one turnover inside your own 30, and that was kind of the difference in the game. Talk about how you thought uh, your your guys played on Friday night against Weatherford. No, I, th- I thought we played exceptionally well. Um, you know, uh, just a, we, 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 we played three games where and been beat by a total of uh, 15 points in three games, and um uh, I like to told the kids on Sunday when we met March Field. It just seems like this year. The fact is, in 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 games like that, you got to have the ball bounce your way once or twice, and um, and 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 our opponents have have gotten those bounces. Um, but I I believe that at some point this year the ball will bounce our way, and um, you know you can look back over the last four years where we've been here uh, since I've been here that that um, in those games the ball has kind of bounced our way really, um, and uh, so. Uh, exceptionally proud of the kids and, and really their relentlessness and um and their grit you know there have been a lot of times that this year where they could have folded up the tent and uh, said to heck with it but I feel like we're fighting really hard against some really quality football teams and um you know like I said just just one of those and it's just one of those games where you got to have the ball bounce your way once or twice and you know, unfortunately it bounced the weather for toy how hard has it been or have you noticed for the, for those guys after that the way that game happened to now focus their attention move away from from last friday and get their minds on this friday night which is essentially a, a win it's a do or die game uh, of course next week you're gonna have to win too but next week matters not if you can't go down to bridge creek and win this week to put yourselves in position to make the playoffs for a fifth straight year yeah no i mean I, I don't think it took us long i think sunday we put it to bed and moved on and uh they they understand the challenge ahead they understand um you know what what the expectation is and and what we're going to try to do, and um, I, th- that senior group, and, and really the whole team is has always, you know, this year we've really bounced back from everything you could possibly probably think of. So um, I, I would expect nothing less. How do you, knowing what's at stake on Friday night, how do you, as a coach, uh, you know, maybe I mean, how do you approach it? Do you approach it where, guys, this is what's ahead of us. This is what we go get if we win, or guys, this is another game. How do you approach that? Oh, I think if I was just to say it's just another game, that would be 
silly. Uh, they would <laughs> see, see right through it. They, they they understand what's at stake, um, and 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 really the you know the traditions and the things that we're trying to build and do, and the importance of it. And uh, you know, of course, you know, losing to your two your rivals hurts, and and uh, uh, playing tight games uh, it, it, it's painful. It hurts, uh, but but uh, like I said, moving on, they understand what's at stake. <clears throat> the importance of you know winning the next two and, and getting into playoffs and and um so that's how we're approaching we, we got to win we got to get in and once we get in it's everybody's oh and oh we got to fight puncher's chance hanging out with head coach zach maynard of the big elks uh, football team down at bridge creek this week uh, for a huge district game you know the bobcats are a team that feels like you know played them a couple played them in, in non-district the last couple of years now they've joined the district it feels like they're a team that's kind of started to get a little bit better. They've got kind of a mixture, right? There's a bunch of some seniors that have definitely been there, but also some young guys making plays for them as well. What challenges will Bridge Creek present from, uh, when, they're, when they have the ball on offense to you guys defensively? Yeah, it's a lot of that, you know, they run a lot of option stuff, um, zone read, you know, power read stuff. Uh, quarterback's really athletic, runs well, uh, and 40 is a, is a really tough runner as well. Um, they're pretty big up front. Um, you know, they're a good football team. They they, they present some challenges, and and uh, just with just with their personnel, uh, quarterback a lot of times will scramble around and then um, just just dump it off, and, and and someone will get loose. So um, it, we'll we'll have to be on our, our toes and, and know exactly what we're doing and getting. Um, Coach Easton's got a great game plan uh, defensively for it. So um, we're we're excited about uh, the opportunity to go play. In a lot of ways, with the with their experience up front and the ability for one of the quarter for the quarterback to run, they remind me a little bit of what we saw with Newcastle last year, uh, with the senior guys up front and kind of the, the way that they can use running backs and, and then the quarterback run game as well. Yeah, very similar. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and the passing game stuff is really pretty simple. There's nothing too crazy necessarily out there, um, but 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 the way they can manipulate the defense with um, running some counter option and. And uh, you know, power read stuff. It, it it can be difficult at times if you don't uh, uh, believe in what you're seeing and and get fooled. <laughs> what about defensively uh, uh, or offensively for you guys? Um, it, it does seem like at times w- when you can get the running game cranked up, the, the complement is there uh, with Logan and the guys on the outside. How do you how how do you match up up front offensively to be able to start running downhill and then open up the uh, the passing game from there? Well, you know, I, we're we're still playing, tinkering with some formations offensively to try to give ourselves a little bit of an advantage in the run game. Um, you know, I, I I like our matchup. Our, our offensive lines has been getting better and better. Um, you know, I feel like we finally maybe have five guys that that, that have been playing uh, the same positions now for a couple of weeks, which is a blessing. We haven't had that all year, and so we are, uh, you know, obviously. Uh, Still a work in progress, not perfect by any means, but 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 they're starting to come along, and um, and so we're excited to see this matchup. Uh, you know, with with their defense, they'll look relatively the same, I imagine, as Weatherford did. Uh, at least that's what they've shown on film. So um, we'll be ready. You know, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do with number three. Yeah, I mean, how, with with what you saw from Weatherford, how do you counter that? If if you go into the game, you see the same things. Is there going to be obvious counters that you can make throughout the week, hoping that they do what the what, what Weatherford does, or is it just kind of a play it by ear type thing once you get out on the field and see how they're going to do? Well, you know, like we we, we implemented a lot of that last um, well, really two weeks ago, and um, if they want to double number three, we're going to take our chances with the other guys on the other side. Um, and if they don't, then number three is pretty good. You mentioned the offensive line. You got some guys, some cohesiveness going on right there. Um, a large part of that, I, I, I'm going to assume, his health is is getting better. How about the rest of the team? Um, particularly when? How's he looking? I know he kind of tweaked his ankle a couple games ago. Um, kind of touch on your health of your team going into this big game. Yeah, uh, you know, Wynn played last week. Um, I think he's still, you know, I think it was pretty obvious, still a little bit hobbled by that ankle. And, um, you know, so we'll continue to evaluate him. And, you know, he's going to practice. He's going to play. He's a tough kid. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a doozy of a question. We've got we've got lots of them, and I don't know that we're going to get many of them back or any at all. So, um, you know, obviously getting wind back and, and getting him healthy helps. And, um, you know, so – but but the offensive line, you're right uh, – 
besides having to move our left tackle to tailback a couple weeks ago, um, uh, they're 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 healthy. Yeah, and it seemed like they held up really well, especially in the pass game on Friday night against what's a pretty darn good front that, that Weatherford throws out there at you. Yeah, you know Weatherford's a great football team, and um, uh, you know like you know senior loaded, senior heavy, and healthy, and um, you know they came over had a great game plan and. Um, did did some really good things against us, I thought, in the, in the run game, and then, um, you know, we kind of put our backs against the wall there, kind of towards the end in, in the fourth quarter. But, um, you know, offensive line is getting better, um, and 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 hats off to them for staying with it and and continuing, you know, that growth as the years gone on, and uh, we're excited about where we're heading in the next three weeks. Now, I've been a big fan of Logan in, in his passing ability this year, and that was evident on Friday night. Can you speak to him and in his progression? As a, I know I've asked you this question before, but I, I've thought I've been enamored with how well he has spun the ball this year. Yeah, and, and you know, really, uh, it, it, it's a testament to all those kids who are who, who are healthy right now and playing because really. You know nobody knows this, but when you when you start losing guys, you've got to you've got to start trying to find ways just to win or to put yourself in a position to win. So, um, you know, we ran through about three or four different offenses. Honestly, it feels like it's been a, a carousel, and uh, but we're starting to uh, figure it out and and really uh, uh, find things I think that are at least fitting the group that we have uh, or, or who's left uh, should say. So, um, and Logan's done a great job of. Of, of staying with it and, and being heady and um, really, really, really just controlling the offense. Uh, it's hard to control one offense, much less jump in, you know, on Sunday and go, guys, we got to do this because we are out of mm-hmm. players. So, um, and, 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 and knowing where people go and knowing where everybody goes, it's been, a, it's been great to see that from him. Hanging out with Coach Zach Maynard of the Big Elks uh, football team. Bridge Creek coming up on on Friday, a, a must win game for the playoff chances. And I want to go to there. You know, uh, going into the season would have been a fi- uh, trying to make the playoffs for the fifth straight year. That's only happened like three times in school history. How much more would it mean to you guys as a program if not only able to tie that school record, but also able to do it with all of the adversity that you've faced throughout this football season? Oh, it'd be massive. It would be. Uh... Um, you you almost can't put it into words. It would be a, a huge, huge for the program, huge for our kids who, who you know that they, they've never not been in the playoffs. So senior group hasn't. So um, of course they want to be there and 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 they understand because they were around two years ago when we did have to go to Cushing and take on Cushing in the first round. That it's a whole new season once you get there. So. Um, we're going to make sure that that we give ourselves every opportunity and every chance to uh, finish the season the right way, the way they wanted to when the season began. Uh, and 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 we're excited about that. Excited about the challenge. You know, Bridge Creek's a good football team. We'll have to play well, um, but but we're going to. Fantastic. What do we got to do to win? We can't turn the ball over. We gotta we gotta um, you know defensively we have to have our eyes in the right place we can't get fooled uh, we have to do our job and then uh, you know offensively really really would like to be extremely physical and and control the football and and make explosive plays when we can all right fantastic thank you sir head coach zach maynard of the big elks going down to bridge creek uh, with a a, a win a, a must win in order to make a fifth straight playoff appearance for the brown and white which do that and then you set up next year as a as a school record type thing uh, doing it for six in a row It'll be a good one. Big Elk TV, Cool 94. Pre-game about 6.20-ish. Yep. 7 o'clock kick. The ejected fans have spoken, by the way. Oh, have they really? We'll, we'll have talk, talk about, about that, that tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow from the Yankees fans. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way.